Hey guys, hope you can hear me. Now, if you're wondering where that rose was going to that I was walking along the street with earlier, it's for this great man here. Let me just show you. William Wallace. That's him right there. Now, William Wallace is actually quite important to my family and my family ancestry because my grandfather was Scottish, John Graham. And um, we traced back the family ancestry of the Scottish clans. And what we found was that the Graham clan actually went to battle with William Wallace. So maybe my great, 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 great grandfather, maybe even before that, actually fought on the battlefield with the great man himself. Right here. I'll just show you his plaque a little bit. And there is a bit of... This is a new camera, new phone, so I'm still trying to get to grips of how that works but that's it right there not sure why it's backwards but still so I'm actually off to Scotland tomorrow so I thought on the eve of my trip that I would come and pay my respects and give a rose to William Wallace who died a horrible death here in Spitalfields Market which is just behind me here so in this area was where William Wallace actually came to his end. He was horribly executed. He was actually a Scottish knight that was betrayed by the English, sorry, by the English. And he was brought down here to London and was held prisoner in the Tower of London. Now, it didn't actually stop there. He actually was trialed for treason against Edward I and was found guilty. Um, Wallace did not give in. They actually gave him a, a crown of oak, similar to what Jesus would have been crowned with, of Nazareth. Um, so he was wearing a crown in the trial and he was sentenced to death in the most horrible way you can imagine, which is being hung, drawn and quartered. Um, so as the story goes, as history goes, he was taken from the Tower of London on the 23rd of August, 1305, and he was dragged, he was actually stripped naked first, if you want to hear all the gory details, and dragged by horse to Smithfield Market, which is just a stone's throw away from where his plaque is here. And um, he had the most horrible death you can imagine, very cruel death actually, where he was hung, he was cut down before he could die, and then he was emasculated. Um, might not need to explain what that is. Um, disemboweled and had all his parts burnt in front of him. And then he was beheaded. And to top it all off, his body was cut into four pieces that went to different parts of the country. Um, one being Newcastle, Berwick, I think was another one, Perth up in Scotland, and Stirling or Edinburgh. Um, I'm hoping it's Stirling because um, that's where my grandfather was from and I'm hoping to go and see his monument up there when I go up to Scotland next week or when you're watching this. Um, and then I will be seeing, hopefully, his monument and his sword. So William Wallace um, does strike a personal chord with me and my family. There he is, oh, Willie. And I'll show you the rose that I left for him down here. People still do leave roses and things and lovely flowers and Scottish thistle there, Scottish thistle. Got some more poppies and Scottish things there. And that's my rose for William, just on the ground there. So, yeah, a bit of a sad end for poor Willie. Um, I thought it would be quite fitting actually that I would come here on the eve of my trip to Scotland as I've never been. Hopefully we'll be trying to search for the Loch Ness Monster as well. Can't resist doing that. But um, yeah, here's the first segment of what we're going to do while I'm up there in Scotland and go and pay homage to William Wallace. So this is where his end was in London. I will be going to where it all began up in the highlands of Scotland. So, from me and Will, signing off, rest in peace, William Wallace. See you next time.